Hey guys, welcome back to The Curly Reader. My name's Amanda, and today I want to share with you a little bit of a book haul. All right, so I want to share with you today some books that I thrifted or was gifted in January with one exception. I have one book in here that I bought new. Everything else was either a gift or it was thrifted. And so I wanted to share all these with you. The majority of these were thrifted. I mean, who are we kidding? But I do have some gifts in here I wanna share as well. So let's start with the one book that I bought brand new. Um, I bought The Magic and Changing Your Stars by Leah Henderson. Um, I got this one, I actually got it from the library and then I just went out and purchased it because I hadn't read it from the library yet. I knew I wanted to read it. And after reading some reviews on it, I knew it was one that I was going to want for my bookshelves regardless. Um, but this follows our main character, Ailey Benjamin Lane. Um, he is an extremely gifted dancer um, and he is going to try out for his school's production of The Wiz. And um, audition day comes and goes and he does not do the best. And so he's humili humiliated. And he confides in his grandpa that he's ready to give up dancing. And in hopes of bolstering Ailey, grandpa shares his own secret. He gave up a promising career as a tap dancer when he was young. And so grandpa has even kept a pair of very special tap shoes from all those years ago. That night, a curious Ailey finds the shoes. He tries them on, taps his toes, and makes a wish. And then in the blink of an eye, he finds himself somewhere that is most definitely no place like home. So it sounds like it's kind of a Wizard of Oz retelling. Um, but the thing that I thought was really, really cool about this is that in the book, or in the back of the book, there is a section that is bl the Black Excellence List. And it's notable names and places in the book. And it says, did you recognize any of the characters' names? Did some of them sound familiar? That's because the characters in this story were named after famous Black individuals dancers, designers, scientists, authors, politicians. Here's a bit of history about real people and places that personify black excellence. And so it lists all the people that the author used as inspiration for the names and places and such in the book. And I just thought that was so unique and so cool. So this was the one book that I purchased new. I take that back. I lied. I purchased one other book new. I'm going to go get it. All right. I'm a big fat liar. So I also pre-ordered a book that I was very, very highly anticipating, and that is Muse by Brittany Cavallero. This I am reading for Historathon, but I also just really, really wanted to own it uh, because I'm so excited about it. And it's basically an alternative history fantasy. Um, and so it's set in the United States in 1893, but it is it is as if the United States was a kingdom and not a democracy. And it kind of centers, I think, around the world's fair, um, but from a fantasy perspective. And it follows this girl who is, her dad is an inventor and she is kind of his muse. And so it just sounds really, really cool. So I did pre-order that and that came in. Um, that actually was released February 2nd. So not in January, but we're including it anyway. All right, let's talk about books that I was gifted. The first book that I was gifted is a copy of the U.S. Constitution. Um, this is the U.S. Constitution explained clause by clause for every American today. It's annotated by Ray Raphael, and my husband bought this for me one day, um, and I just absolutely love it. I love it. I will treasure this always. I, yeah, there's not a whole lot else to say about that. All right, also, I had a very nice subscriber sent me Transcendent Kingdom. I was so excited. She emailed me and she's like, hey, I have an extra copy I'd love to send you if you'd like it. And I'm like, oh my goodness. I about started crying. I was so excited. So um, this was one of my favorite books of 2020. And I'm so excited to have a copy of it because I want to reread it. I want to annotate the crap out of it. It's so good. And um, yeah, so thank you so much, Kim, for sending this my way. This meant so much to me, so much to me. Like, it touched my heart. So thank you, thank you, thank you for that. All right, and then the last book that I was gifted um, was actually gifted to me by the author. 
And so I was gifted Simone Lafray and the Chocolatiers Ball by S.P. O'Farrell. And this is a very short um, middle grade historical fiction. I believe it's historical fiction. And it follows Simone who, as a covert agent, she walks in the footprints of her spy mother darting between the shadows. If she's not sleuthing, she's icing eclairs and dusting pastries in, pastries in her father's patisserie. When a notorious thief returns to Paris, the patisserie is threatened and Simone questions everything. She and her father must participate in the exclusive chocolatier's ball to redeem themselves and catch the thief. Simone's concealed life is crumbling. The shop hangs in the, dis in the balance and now she needs a ball gown. Life in a French patisserie may not be as sweet as she thought. So I just thought that that sounded so fun. It takes place in Paris. Like, uh, yeah. So thank you so much for sending me this. Um, this was, yeah, I'm looking forward to reading this probably during middle grade March. This is going to be getting read. So definitely go check out Simone Lafray and the Chocolatier's Ball. Or yeah, and the Chocolatier's Ball, if that sounds like something that interests you. All right, and then the rest of these are thrifted. So I did pick up a couple of like children's books for my son. I grabbed The Wonky Donkey. I've heard, seen this around a ton and I've been really curious about it. I know it's supposed to be really funny. So I grabbed that for him at the thrift store. I also found this Thomas over 700 sticker sticker book that is brand new, like never been written in, which is hard to find at the thrift store. I got this for a dollar. Grab that for sure. And then I also got a Magic Eye book. So this is Disney Magic Eye. Um, and yeah, I found this and I thought that this would be so much fun. These were like all the rage when I was a kid. And so I thought that these would be fun to share with my kids and see if they can see some of the images in the area, in here. So I got those. Those were kind of picture books for my son. Um, and then I also got two adult novels and then the rest are middle grade. So the two adult novels that I got, I got The Harbinger um, by Jonathan Kahn. This is one that my dad recommended and I actually got this for my husband to read because it sounded like something that he would be really interested in. Um, but it basically it says, is it possible that there exists an ancient mystery that holds the secret of America's future? That this mystery is behind everything from 9-11 to the collapse of the global economy? That God is now sending a prophetic message on which America's future hangs? Um, I don't know. I've heard good things about this. It sounds kind of like kooky, but I've heard that it's actually not, and it's actually really well done. So, um, I got this for my husband to read. Um, and then I picked up for myself the book of unknown Americans by Christina Henry Henriquez. I don't know. Am I saying that right? Um, but this, it says a boy and a girl fall in love. The hopes of two families collide with destiny. After 15-year-old Maribel sustains a terrible injury, the only hope her family sees for her recovery lies in the United States. Leaving a comfortable life behind in Mexico, the Riveras risk everything to come north. It's not long after they settle that Mayor, Mayor Toro, the son of one of their new neighbors, recognizes a kindred spirit in this beautiful damaged outsider. Their love story sets in motion events that will profoundly affect the pair of star-crossed lovers and their two families, resonate with the hopes of resonant with the hopes and dreams, guilt and love of men and women from all over Latin America who have come to the United States. The Book of Unknown Americans is a stunning novel that gives us a new definition of what it is to be American. This sounded so good. I've never heard of it before. This was a cover buy for me. I just, yeah, that sounded so good. So that was the, those are the adult novels I got. And then everything else here is middle grade. So the first one that I got is a chunker. So I found this. It's The Complete Tales and Poems of Winnie the Pooh by A.A. A. Milne. Um, Decorations by Ernest H. Shepard. So I found this. It's huge. It was like $3. The only thing I'm not, it does have a broken spine, but it's like illustrated. It's so beautiful and I wanted it. So I grabbed it. So I got that. Um, I also, let's see, I picked up Rump by Liesl Shirtliff. Um, this is one that I heard about from Krista at Books and Jams. Um, she has read, this is like the part of a series, The Fairly True Tale of Rumpelstiltskin. But there's a few different ones, Jack, Grump, Red, and Rump. Um, and it's just a Rumpelstiltskin retelling. So I thought that that would be a lot of fun. 
Uh, Newberry winner that I picked up that I don't have yet is Julie of the Wolf. Julie of the Wolves by Jean Craighead George. And this is about an Eskimo village. Um, she is known to her small Eskimo village. She's known as Myax. To her friend in San Francisco, she is Julie. When the village is no longer safe for her, Myax runs away. But she soon finds herself lost in the Alaskan wilderness without food, without even a compass to guide her. She slowly is accepted by a pack of Arctic wolves. And she grows to love them as though they were family. So that sounds good another um i think i actually have this one i don't know why i bought it again this is another newberry winner when you reach me by rebecca stead and this is one that is basically about this girl who starts getting like mysterious notes from the future i think something along those lines i'm not sure um a non-fiction middle grade that i picked up that i'm really excited about is boy by roald Dahl. this is tales of childhood and this is just the store like biographical information about Roald Dahl, which I think is brilliant. Um, I picked up one from an author that I actually have two or three other books by this author, and I've never read any of them. And that's Wendy Mass. Um, I got Jeremy Fink and the Meaning of Life. Um, when Jeremy Fink receives a mysterious box on his 13th birthday with the words, the meaning of life engraved on the lid, he and his best friend Lizzie can't wait to find out what's inside. But when he discovers that the box is locked, he and Lizzie set off on an adventure around Manhattan to find the keys to life's biggest mystery. It has really good ratings and yeah, I got it. I don't know why I buy books by the same author when I've never read the author, but I did. All right. I picked up a book in verse that I've already read and I really enjoyed, and that's Rhyme Schemer by K.A. Holt. I actually think I read this last year. Was it last year or the year before for middle grade March? And um, this is about a kid who is a bully, I believe, and it's kind of like his transformation, but it's written in verse. So I grabbed that one. I also grabbed Feathers by Jacqueline Woodson. Um, this is a Newberry Honor book. Um, it says, Hope is the thing with feathers. Though they're reading poems about it in school, Franny hasn't thought much about hope. Instead, she's worried about her brother, concerned about her best friend's increasing holiness, and feeling fed up with the bullies at school. But then a mysterious new boy comes to school. He seems almost perfect, but maybe he isn't quite what he appears. Through his perspective, though, Franny and her friends start seeing things in a different way. I don't know. I just, I know um, a lot of people love Jacqueline Woodson. I don't actually know if I've ever read anything by her now that I'm thinking about it. Um, but I found that one. So I grabbed that. All right. I also grabbed, I believe this is another Newberry winner. This doesn't have the Newberry sticker on it yet uh, on it, but I'm pretty sure Hello Universe won the Newberry um, by Erin and Trotta Kelly. And this is about four different kids. They aren't friends. They don't all go to the same school. But when Chet pulls an unthinkable prank on Virgil and Virgil's pet guinea pig, Gulliver, the lives of these four middle schoolers collide in surprising and unexpected ways. Just a coincidence or something's meant to be. So I grabbed that one. Um, I also, a couple of cover buys that I got. So this is actually a National Book Award finalist um but it's the secret life of amanda k woods by ann cameron i only bought this because my middle initial is k and i thought it was funny so that's the only reason i bought this but apparently it was also a national book award finalist um in 1998 so i really don't know what it's about that's the only reason i bought it all right, another cover by I got So Be It by Sarah Weeks. This is about a girl whose mother is mentally, like has mental disabilities. So she lives with her mother and her, do um, and her doting neighbor, Bernadette. Heidi has a lucky streak that has a way of pointing her in the right direction. When a mysterious word in her mother's vocabulary begins to haunt her, Heidi's thirst for the truth leads her on a cross-country journey in search of the secrets of her past. That sounded really interesting to me. Um, another cover by, I honestly just thought that this cover was adorable. It's a Z Zinnia and the Bees by Daniel Davis. How cute is that cover? 
Today was supposed to be the best ever, the absolute best. Instead, I got detention on the last day of school before summer break. I didn't even know that was possible. I honestly thought people would like the scarf I added to the school mascot. Ugh, no one seems to get yarn bombing. I actually know what that is. <laughs> um, my detention were the offense, or me for that matter, except my older brother Adam, that is. Number two, except Adam, a.k.a. my best friend and yarn bombing accomplice, is gone. Left me behind without a word, no note, no see you later, nothing. And number three, and then bees in my hair. So it's about this girl's like horrible day, I guess. I don't know. It just sounded, it looked really cute. And then the last book that I have to share with you is Horton's Incredible Illusions. This is the second book to Horton's Miraculous Mechanisms, which I read in January and loved. And so I got on Better World Books and found the second book. Um, and I absolutely, I still need to take off. It was a library cast off. I took off the plastic, but there's still like a couple things that I need to try to get off of the dust jacket. And yeah, I am so excited to read the second book because the first book was so cute. And it just follows this kid, Stuart Horton, who um, in the first book went on this adventure to try to figure out what happened to his great uncle who like mysteriously disappeared. And it was such a cute book. And so I'm really excited to have the second book as well. And I love these covers. Like I just think that they're so catch, like they're just appealing. So that's it. Those are the books that I was thrifted and gifted and two that I purchased for myself in January, early February. Um, so yeah, if you've read any of these, I would love to hear your comments about them down below in the description box. Let me know some fun thrifted finds that you have found lately, and that's going to do it for today. So I hope that you enjoyed this, and I hope that you stick around and subscribe, and until next time, see ya!